Joining us now is the Acting Attorney General, John Hoffman. Good of you to join us once again. You were there for the ceremony today, this most diverse class in state police history. What does that mean for the state of New Jersey? What does it say for our law enforcement community? You know, Mike, I think the most important thing is it means that, that the leadership in the state is going to reflect the character and the composition of the state. You know, the 153rd is now the most diverse class. Before that, the 152nd was the most diverse class. And we've put in place a lot of procedures, evaluative procedures, to make sure we're doing a qualitative review of all the applicants and that we really get as many great applicants from possible around the state and get as diverse a pool as possible from around the state. So, you know, it's not just the 153rd. The 152nd was almost as diverse. And together, they're two, you know, very different classes and are really setting a pattern for making sure, as I said, that the leadership in the state, which the state police is, represents the character and the composition of the state. In addition to that, to, the, to showing the state that a mirror, holding up a mirror, if you will, to the state, uh, it also addresses some of the long lingering accusations and problems that had existed, uh, or allegedly existed at the state police for a long period of time, having to do with the way they interacted with members of the minority communities. Do you think that uh, simply by virtue of having a, a more diverse staff that much of those issues are, are better addressed? I think they are much better addressed, Mike. I mean, as diverse a group as we have, they can relate better to what is the most diverse population in the state. But it, but it doesn't just stop in getting diversity into the class. We've also introduced a lot of diversity training, cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness. Um, we've had classes come in that were taught by uh, members of the Muslim Outreach Committee so that they can make sure that it's not just getting diverse people in, it's making sure that we are teaching and that we're institutionalizing the values of cultural sensitivity and to make sure that we can relate to all of the different groups that are in the state. I mean, look, we're the most diverse state in the country. We've got to be in a situation in which the leadership, which is the state police, can relate to all of the different groups that are in the state. I see the demand for state police services continues to grow as well. Uh, I think a half a dozen troopers going to help Asbury Park with the gun violence issue there. We have state police obviously working in Camden, uh, the, the call out in Trenton as well. Uh, do we have enough state troopers to meet this apparently increasing demand for their services? Well, I'll tell you, Mike, with the 152nd graduating in the 153rd in October and the 153rd graduating in December, we're introducing another 200-plus uh, troopers back into the pool. So we're certainly increasing the numbers. I think that brings the numbers upwards of about 2,700, which is, you know, a pretty average number for the last six to eight years. You know, would we love, you know, to be in a situation in which there were 10,000? Yeah, you could do a lot more with 10,000, but we think that 2,700 is a pretty efficient uh, uh, number and one that, that gives us some flexibility to deploy around the state where necessary, as we have in, you know, you just mentioned Asbury, as we have in Camden, as we have in Newark, and as we have especially in Trenton. As, as the economy improves, as we go through this recovery, if more money becomes available, does the state police force grow? Uh, you know, Mike, it'll grow if we find that that's the most efficient use of the resources. You know, we're never, we're not going to just grow the state police for growth's sake. We'll grow it if we find that we can use it and, and those resources are, are, are best spent on the state police. So, you know, we'll make that determination on a going forward basis. You know, we're doing much smarter policing now. We're, we're working on many more productive, collaborative efforts with local policing and municipal policing. And so, um, you know, I, I can say that we're leaner, but we're much more efficient than we were. And, uh, you know, I'm sure some additional resources will be thrown in the state police's way, but only if it makes sense. While I have you here, I also have to ask about the nomination of Kevin O'Dowd uh, by Governor Christie to become the next attorney general. Uh, were you surprised at all? Were you disappointed at all that the governor did not nominate you? Mike, I have to be honest with you. I am, I am to this point filled with nothing but pride and with a sense of privilege and a sense of honor as to be having had the opportunity to hold this position. There is there's not a, a, a millimeter of my body that has any room for disappointment. And I'll tell you one thing. I've known Kevin for 10 years. 
Kevin, Jeff, and I have been friends. Kevin is a fantastic choice for attorney general. He will make a great attorney general. I've spoken to him every day since he was appointed. You know, you and I once sat down, we spoke about the fact that, you know, it's very interesting that a lot of us are cut from the same cloth and cut from the same fabric. And, and Kevin is, is one of those who was, we were together in the U.S. Attorney's Office. The transition to him will be as seamless, if not more, than it was to me. And I tell you, as a citizen of New Jersey, I'm very proud that he'll be our attorney general. One more question, the obvious one, will you be staying on uh, and, and going back to your old position in the Justice Department? Uh, you know, Mike, I'm going to think through right now a number of different options and, um, and make a decision that I think is, is in my best interest. I'm certainly incredibly loyal to the state and to the administration. So I've got a couple of things to think through. I'll tell you right now, what I'm thinking about is what my job is on Monday and on Tuesday. I've got 24-7 on this job. And, and the most important thing is, is for the time that I'm there, that I serve the state as best as I can. That's really where all of my effort is right now. General Hoffman, have to leave it there. New Jersey's acting attorney general, John Hoffman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Nice to speak with you.